Hello friends, my name is Dil Sandhu and I'm a CICC licensed immigration consultant based out of Greater Toronto area, Canada. Today I'm going to talk about how to choose the right program because a lot of students who want to study in Canada after grade 12 or after bachelor's or even after master's, they do not put much thought or they don't think strategically about how you know this program is going to help them because at the back of the mind most of these students want to get Canadian PR, right? In that context, it makes sense that they, if that is the reason, they should think very, very strategically as to how should they choose the right program. So let's go right into it. Let's do the reality check. At the end of 2022, there were 800,000 international students in Canada, and there were almost close to 300,000 students on a postgraduate work permit. And just in 2022 alone, there were almost 550,000 international students who arrived. And now you can guess that how many would arrive in 2023 or 2024, right? Plus, there are hundreds of thousands of students on open work permit, on intra-company transfers, and a majority of those people might also be interested in the Canadian PR. Now, against that backdrop, we have Canadian immigration target. Now, the Canadian immigration target is 485,000 for 2024. And out of that, there is around 281,000 in economic immigration target. I just want to make it clear, this is the number of people, number, not the number of applications. So if, just imagine if there are, there are three people in an application, so the number of applications is not more than 100,000, right? So again, it's against this backdrop, you need to think very, very strategically, right? When you want to come and plan your study. Now let's look at what should be the strategy, right? So I basically tried to think over this subject and came up with, you know, three things one should think about when they're choosing the right program. First is the program of study, right? What they want to study and whether this program needs to be a two-year diploma or a three-year advanced uh, program or a bachelor's or a master's or some specialization. So those things you need to think about. Also, what field is that, right? Will that help them in uh, finding a good job? Right? So that is very critical component in thinking about the right program. Then you have the region or location of study. And why is that important is because a lot of uh, PNPs, which is provincial nominee programs, have some kind of international students or some give some advantage to international students. Now, choosing the right college in a certain province might be helpful. And even within the same province, there are certain locations where you might, might get more uh, scoring factors. I'll talk about that in, in my future slides. And the last but not the least, even job opportunities. So the job opportunities is critical. You want to see that whatever you're getting into, there would be a higher demand for those kind of occupations. So field of study, even though you, when you do your internship, you might be able to get better internship if you are in a certain area or geography, or if the field you have chosen is the right one. So based on the intersection of all these things, three things, which is program of study, region or location of study, job opportunities, you have an advantage in PR. Now let's look at the education points in Express Entry, right? Which is a application management system. So if you look at the level of education points, so maximum you can get is 150 points and that is for somebody who has a PhD. So anyway, so that points are valid both for Canadian or foreign education. But then there are additional points uh, up to 30 points you can get for post-country education in Canada in uh, your comprehensive ranking score. So those depends upon whether you are a one-year diploma or a two-year diploma or you have done a master's or a three-year uh, program. So based on those kind of criteria, you might be able to get up to 30 points in your CL score. So now let's look at the benefit of Canadian education for PNP. So PNP is provincial nominee programs. So in Canada, there are 10 provinces and three territories, right? But all of them are grouped as like PNP programs. So most of these PNPs have either Pacific programs or they give some advantage to international students from their own province. For example, if you look at Ontario, so they have two streams. One, we have the employer job offer international graduate stream. This is for people generally who have either two years of a diploma or a degree uh, within the last two years from Ontario or there is a master's graduate stream where you have done master's or PhD from uh, Ontario University, you might be eligible for that, right? 
Similarly, we have BCPNP options available for international graduate streams which might require a job offer. And then you have international postgraduate streams without requiring a job offer in certain fields of study such as natural, applied or health sciences for eligible post-secondary institutions. And then every other province as well have something or the other to the benefit of international students which you need to check. Now, if let's say if I'm a master's student and I want to go to British Columbia, I th should think about how is this thing going to help me out? I would rather do it from some university or some postgraduate institution where there is a clear cut path to becoming a permanent resident, right? So rather than choosing a program or a college or a location randomly, you should think very, very strategically about this thing. Then you also have location of study gives advantage in permanent residence. In most PNP, there are additional scoring factors. Now what has happened recently is that they are giving preference to the location of study. They have separate points. For example, if you are outside the metropolitan area, which means the population centers, for example, it could be Greater Toronto area or GTA, you call it, or Vancouver area, Greater Vancouver area. So those kind of things have advantages. Let me give you one example for in case of Ontario uh, PNP, right? Under them, there are scoring factors for location for international student stream and master graduate stream, right? So what happens in case of PNP is that there are two things. One is that you need to be eligible, right? And secondly, if you are eligible, then they will give certain scores to certain criteria. And one of that criteria in case of uh, international student stream or master's graduate stream is location of study. Let's say you have done a program from uh, Toronto, you will get zero points for that. If you have done it from GTA other than Toronto, you will get three points. But if you've done programs other than GTA and except Northern Ontario, for example, uh, you have done some program from Hamilton, you have done some program from University of Golf, or let's say Golf, uh, you have done some program from Barry, Ottawa, and many other locations, you will get eight points. Similarly, for Northern Ontario, you will get 10 points. So that is one another advantage. You you'd have to not only think about what province you're getting into, but you also have to think of, about what location inside that province to get maximize your chances for getting a peer. And last but not the least, what you study will make a lot of difference. It improves your chances for landing a skilled job, right? And even at the federal level, Canada has launched category-based draws based on certain occupations like healthcare occupations, uh, STEM field occupations, and so on and so forth, right? For example, if you want to become a web developer, you need to have skills and education to do that job, right? So that's why choosing the right program is very important. For example, in web developer, you might need experience in, for example, JavaScript, you might need experience in HTML, C CSS, you might need experience in React libraries, right? And so on and so forth. So you need to be aware of those things and the formal education would play a very significant role in that. Plus then there are regulated professions which you can't even do unless you have done that education. For example, it could be nursing could be one example, plus paralegal in Ontario, another example. Then you have uh, uh, certain ECE programs, right? You need to have done that particular program in order to become an early childhood educator, right, for that example. And then there are many programs uh, available. There are many occupations in priority or in demand in PNP, which requires a certain skill set. You can't do that program unless you have done that, right? So it's very important that you choose the program of study very wisely. So now just to summarize again what we have already discussed that so program of study, region, location of study is very important and the job opportunities available, what is the market, will this help you in finding a job, right, gaining the experience to be eligible for Canadian experience class or does it directly qualify you for uh, a job offer kind of a program without even having experience in Canada. So there are many paths available. So you need to think very strategically before you make a choice. So if you need my help, my contact information is I'm available on mobile or WhatsApp at plus one four three seven eight four eight seventy two hundred Toronto time EST. My email is info at Immigration and website is www.dillimmigration.com. I'm happy to help and I wish you all the best in choosing the right program. Thank you and have a great day.